Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another list. Um, I want to do more lists, but I don't want to do the same thing everybody else does. So I'm just going to pick things out of the ether, and I'm going to go with that. Today I'm going to talk about books that I've wanted to read, that I bought ages ago, that I want to read, that for some odd reason I just never get around to. Like, these are books that high up on my want to read list, but I just never read them. So jumping into it, this one is Gore Vidal's Messiah. Um, this is an old, old book. In fact, it's in terrible quality. I found it at uh, one of my local trading bookstores when I was looking for uh, Vidal stuff. And I came across it, I think it was like $3.50, even in this condition. His stuff is hard to find. Um, and when you do find it, it's expensive. But this one's really interesting because it deals with a new type of messiah, as in like the, uh, the television broadcast, how uh, TV is the new god. Vidal was not uh, big on television culture back in his day. I'm a huge fan of the man himself, um, but... I did read Myra Breckenridge, and I think my um, my enjoyment of that novel was ruined by knowing about the man himself. Um, had I gone in knowing less about him, in fact, the book was spoiled for me when I watched a documentary um, of him. They spoiled the the, tw the twist ending, um, so I have heard absolutely nothing about this one. And I, I'm not too big on like the Burr and Lincoln and all that, uh, you know, historical. I know it's not historically accurate. But I'm not too big on that, his parodies and satires around that time, so I figured I'd give this one a try. But I never have. Oh, that's one. Next up is one that the hype train kind of ruined me for. Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Um, I've heard so many mixed reviews about this. It sounds terrific. You, if you guys know me, I love National Book Award winners or even finalists, and this was a nominee, finalist, whatever. Um, I want to read it, and I will read it eventually, but for some odd reason, every single time I put it on my TBR for, like, upcoming that month, I end up reading a really terrible review from somebody I trust, and it ends up just falling off. Um, I really need to jump into it and give it a try. Um, another thing is, if you've read any of these books and you'd like to convince me to pick them up right now, please do so in the comments below. But it's Station Eleven. Then, next up is one that I bought strictly off of, this was a strictly an impulse buy. The Hike by Drew McGarry? M McGarry? I don't know how to pronounce it. This is wacky as hell. If you look, I don't know how close I can get, but there's like bulldog people fighting. There's a hovercraft up here. There's like the mummy, but without the wrappings. There's bugs. It's all different kinds of weird stuff. Now, this one I did pick up and try to read, and I got like 50 pages into it, and I loved it. But then a review request thing came up that I absolutely had to do. I put it down, I just haven't picked it up again. Um, it's super short. I mean, you can look at how thin this thing is for a hardcover. Um, and the, yeah, and the writing's huge, too. The actual font's pretty pretty dang big. It's only 268 pages. But um, this one, I saw a list of modern literary horror. Um, and I think I went, I think another thing, it didn't seem too much like horror. It seemed more like a dark fantasy. So I think that's another reason why I never picked it up. And I have to be in a certain mood for dark fantasy. I don't mind it. I just have to be in a certain mood for it. So that's The Hike. Next up is one I've heard nothing but good things about. The Wind-Up Girl by a name I'm going to screw up from here to Texas. Uh, Paolo Bacagalupi. <laughs> Bacagalupi? I don't know. I'm so sorry. I apologize. not like he's watching this. But... Um, this one is one of those, uh, I don't know that it's not, I don't think it's cyberpunk, but then again you have like uh, new technology, you got, it, it's almost like the kind of thing in Black Panther with Wakanda, you know, you have the, uh, not down to earth, I don't want to say, I don't know how to put it, but you got the, uh, the street level stuff and then you have these huge buildings in the background that makes you feel like the technology is bigger than the actual um, culture down here, I, I guess is the best way to put it. Anyways, um, that's kind of my jam. I like that. Um, the story's based in, you know, like a, uh, well, of course, any future would be fictional because we're just guessing, but in a uh, kind of a high-tech, but in a low-tech environment, I guess is what I would, um, how I would put it. It's kind of like Star Wars in that sense. You got all this high-tech, but then you got people living out in the desert and huts, you know, that kind of deal. Um, so that's the wind-up girl. Next, last um, on this is kind of funny, to me at least. I find it just hilarious. Um, I have four copies of this book. Never read this book. 
Um, and I'm going to show you the different copies I have, and we're going to go over the story for each of them. So, Donna Tartt's The Secret History is a book we're talking about. The reason why I've never gotten into this one, and I know this is supposed to be technically, so not technically, it's supposed to be, I've heard it is her best book, even better than The Goldfinch. Um, the reason why I haven't jumped into this is because I'm, I am sometimes make the mistake of reading an author's worst book first, hoping to see their growth as an author. Unfortunately, I read The Little Friend first, and I hated it. I hated every single minute of it. Her writing's fine. Her writing's great. She's a little verbose. Not a little. She's a lot verbose. Um, and this one is a 500-page, a I guess, thriller, literary thriller. And sometimes those can get super long-winded, and I know how long-winded she is from watching The Little Friend. But I'm getting long-winded myself. Let me tell you the rest of the sto this story. So the first one I bought of this is this one. I got this at Got Walls in Georgia. Um, I got it for, I don't know, like five bucks, something like that, um, just because it seemed interesting to me. And this is the copy that I bought way, way back then. This is probably, what, five years ago, I want to say, at least. Um, five years ago, I grabbed this one. So I had this one. Then I found this one. If you, if you, see, you see that unnatural bend, that horrible bend, it's almost like it, I think it's water damaged and it dried out pretty well. You can see how bad it's also dusty because this one's been sitting up in the closet because I wanted to tell the story. Now the dust jacket for this one was on this one, so I have two hardcover copies. Both of these were a quarter. Don't get don't 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 look at me like I'm crazy. Both of these were a quarter, but I took the this one's spine is fine. The dust jacket needs to be cleaned. It's like plastic. It's weird. Um, but so I took the the dust jacket off the warped one. That one went into the closet, and then I put this one up on the shelf. So I have a decent copy of it. But then, I'm at the library the other day, and I find this for free. So I picked this up. This is the paperback. So I have two, I have a uh, mass market paperback, I have a trade paperback, and I have two copies of the hardcover, one without a dust jacket. So anyways, yeah, these are all books that I haven't read or have been put off for some reason. Um, if any of you, like I said before, if any of you have read any of these books, let me know down there in the comments below and try to talk me into reading any of them. Are any of these books your favorites? Are any of these books just terrible? Um, let me know all down there and I'll weigh decisions as it goes. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another list. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!